Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Welcome to Don's Fold in Surrey. This is often a place I come to my shoe off. It's a bit of a different one today. I thought I would have a look at some of my daily trainers. Now, what I consider a daily trainer is, is to be a shoe that isn't basically a race shoe. So the shoe that you sort of soak up the miles, probably a max cushion shoe, probably sort of not exactly a lightweight one. And uh, you don't normally consider it to be a shoe that you go overly fast in, but sometimes you're just out in a run, you want to pick up the pace and uh, you just want to see how yeah, you can go. So I thought I would do my normal sort of testing circuit. It's about two and a quarter miles, about my marathon pace, maybe slightly offset for the fact that we're wearing heavier shoes and see how we go. So let's have a look at the ones we're going to have a look at. So I've got three of the shoes that I've used most this year. They've got the Vermero 16s, they've got the Nova Blast 2s and the invincibles now it's kind of the order here of firm to soft to very soft so i think what i'll do is i'll test out the romero's first and move into the nova blast and then the invincibles and then if I get time, I think I might sort of try a faster shoe to get a bit of a reference point. What I normally do in these tests is to run the first one, sort of how, how I feel, and then try and make the next ones run exactly the same time using racing activity on my Garmin and see how the heart rate compares and just general feel for the shoes. Let's get a little warm up done, get the heart rate up and then get on with the Vermeer 16s on the first one. And the rest, I don't think I've ever seen a bust around here, but anyway. <laughs> Okay, warm up done, few strides done, and we're ready to go in the Vermeer 16s. Right, I'll see how we go. Okay, near the end of the first mile, I've come onto this nice little country lane. It's a totally country lane circuit, so a couple of rolling hills to start with, and this bit is reasonably flat, and we've got a sharp climb to come towards the end of the loop. But uh, around about 7 minute mile pace, I feel like I'm working quite hard, which is good because it's giving me a little workout as well. Right, see you later. So we're now on the climb. Not bad these Romero is actually, quite nice and firm, quite responsive this sort of effort. Not as fast as a race shoe, well, sort of just from feel, but uh, yeah, not bad. Right, let's put the camera on and get up this hill. Okay, 15.15 for that loop. That's about 30 seconds slower than my record for this course in sort of proper racing shoes. But yeah, not bad. I feel like I was working quite hard to up the hills. So I got my heart rate averaging about 128. Maximum was, I think, 141. I have to check the stats up there. But uh, yeah, for the first one, that felt like it was sort of a bit of a shock. Maybe because I just haven't been used to that sort of effort for a while. And it's a bit of a rolling circuit, so it's not the easiest of courses. Right, but if, the Fremero actually felt quite nice though. I think the fact that they're slightly firmer felt like they were slightly more responsive for that sort of effort. So as soon as I put the Nova Blast 2s on here, I definitely know, noticing there's a definite um, increasing softness. So will that be helpful or not? I kind of feel with the Nova Blast 2 that I kind of sink into the ground a bit. So I'm interested to see how much effort I need to do to go, keep going here. So I want to do what race activity on my Garmin and see how close I can get to that effort, which I think is going to be challenging because it was about a 702 pace, I think. So in sort of like heavy shoes, that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Right, got a bit of light left and uh, right, let's get this going then. Okay, just over halfway into this moon boss run. They feel so much uh, spongier. I feel quite clumpy on foot, but oddly I feel like the effort's kind of calmed down a bit. Whether well, I'm just getting used to the effort, I don't feel like I'm breathing quite hard, but uh, I'm nine seconds ahead. So that's interesting. I need to sort of always ease off a bit. So, see at the end. Okay, Nova Blast 2 run done. It was okay, it was about four seconds quicker, so more or less the same effort. It just felt like a different sort of effort. I mean, because it's such a softer shoe than the Vermeeros. It didn't really sort of feel like the ground so much. Like when I was going down the hill, it was kind of nice in a way, but you kind of felt like it was better in the Vermeeros, and yet the time suggests it was actually the same. I have to look at the heart rate. It's kind of why you do these tests, because when you wear the shoes, you kind of like get a different sensation to what the actual data is telling you. Now, whether it would be any different if you just took it for a bit more than two miles that like I'm doing here, remains to be seen. And these uh, Invincibles really are the softest ones. I mean, you feel like they're just almost moon boots just sort of bobbing up and down. So, yeah, so it's about a seven minute mile pace I need to do. 
I think that probably translates to about 6.50 if I was wearing racing shoes. I'll see if I get time to probably put the speeds on at the end, just to put a comparison of how a lighter shoe is. So anyway, here are the Invincibles ready to go. I've actually taken my arm warmers off after the first one, because it's quite a mild day today, it's about 10 degrees, pretty cooling down a bit. A lot of traffic today because there's a bit of uh, a road close near here. So the way for a country lane is just to have to be a bit careful. Right, let's go on these Invincibles, here we go. Okay, halfway through the Invincibles, you really feel like having to work against the shoe in this sort of effort. So much sort of shoe, you can sort of really feel the wide base. I almost feel like every stride I'm having to do more effort than normal, but I'm trying to keep pace and I'm doing so. I think the heart rate's okay, but I just feel like this is hard. Well, maybe it is the third effort, I'm getting tired. All right, see you later. Okay, Invincible's done. And interestingly, as I was saying earlier, although they sort of felt harder, that was actually similar pace. If anything, it was sort of slightly quicker, but it does check the heart rate, it maybe it's slightly higher. I kind of feel at the moment, the main point is not much to choose between these shoes. So what I've done now is put the Speed 2 Run Shields on, which noticeably feel like I've got nothing on my feet relatively to those other sort of much heavier shoes. And here we are, they're about 100 grams lighter. And they also feel somewhat firmer because the last two shoes were quite soft shoes. I mean, these I feel are, softer than the Vomeros, but definitely sort of feel more like a racing vibe type, sort of just a bit like an extra percent, but a bit, a, bit, a bit firmer. So you've got that sort of like kickoff you, you feel that you've got, whereas those other ones, yeah, you just feel like it's more like sort of plush comfort, but, um, and you have to sort of work hard to get your neck stride up. You feel like you're having to work to get off the ground. Right, so we've got just about enough light to get this last one in. It's about a quarter of an hour. And uh, I wonder if we actually race it. We'll try and run at the same speed, but in theory, this should be easier on heart rate, but we'll see. see. Cause here's the last one. And I'm now getting quite tired because of those shoes probably add, I think compared to the next percent, well, maybe I'm just not that fit at the moment, uh, about 30 seconds. But we'll see on this one that what actually does, cause see if the heart rate plummets down, that was being an indication that um, these race shoes really do work or these lightweight ones at least oh if you feel like you're wasting your money you might as well wear these max um, comfort ones which are usually a bit cheaper anyway right let's go on with this before, before we um lose the light okay first mile done in the speed two run, run shields noticeably lighter I feel like you've got nothing on your feet compared to the invincible in fact all of them really you do notice a slightly less cushioning in them though but plenty enough it feels a bit more sort of a racy vibe to, to be sure. Um, I'm not sure that I'm really going massively easier because it's the last one, but it kind of feels like it's more like natural in these shoes to run at this pace, shall we say. Right, let's go on. See you at the end, it's still light. Okay, speed's done. I'll let myself go a bit there and uh, it's part of 30 seconds quicker. So it just goes to show that speeds perhaps are speedy, but uh, We'll go inside and have a look at the spreadsheet. Yeah, I think just noticed then that when I felt like I was sort of just wanting to sort of pick it up a bit, it was flagging a bit, and just sort of so much easier to pick the legs up. I think that's the sort of lighter shoe. And, and compared to the Invincible, I didn't feel like I was working against the shoe. It was kind of, although it wasn't, the cushioning wasn't so good, it's sort of different purpose. It's just designed to get, get yourself off the ground as quickly as possible and onto the next stride. Obviously the speed isn't the fastest shoe around. I'd, I'd have to test this against the next one. I'll compare this to the times I've done on the previous segments when I've done this, albeit on different days and different fitnesses and different weather conditions, but it'd be a good, interesting test, especially with our heart rate. So it's pleased with that. So it was a good workout as well, four by two and a bit miles. So uh, yeah, it all adds to the cause. I'm trying to get my most miles run in a year ever. I think I need to average about 10 miles a day for the rest of the year to get there. I think I'm already about second place, but um, more on that another day. Right, let's get back inside, have a look at the spreadsheet, and we'll see you later. And if I quickly turn around here, I'm using this Christmas tree as a bit of an impromptu light. <laughs> right, see you in a bit. Okay, so I've prepared my spreadsheet, and I'm sure you'll be glad to hear of that. So very quick, we'll whistle tour through this one. I'll try and be quick, so uh, don't bore you too much. So I did four runs in four different shoes, Vomero 16, Overblast 2, Nike Invincible, and the Speed 2 Run Shield. And this one here is the best ever time I've done in these shoes, which bizarrely was in a tense pro next percent, which I've hardly ever run in. So it's actually probably better shoe than perhaps I thought it was. So the segment was basically just over two miles, 2.16 is the official measure. And then the segment is just slightly shorter at 2.13. And then there's three main parts. It, um, it, it sort of starts off flat, then you go down a st quite a steep hill, then you go up quite a steep hill. So the net overall uh, gradient is about zero, but it feels like it's sort of like rolling. 
and then you go on to Rams Lane, which is sort of feels fairly flat, but it very slight gra gradual rise at the end. So it's about one percent uphill overall. Well, that's certainly the flattest part of the course. And then Knighton's Lane is the last main section, which kind of starts off flat, then swoops down, and then it has the toughest part of the course, which is Knighton's Hill, which is seven percent uphill, and it takes about just over a minute because it's 0.15 of a miles. So I set off in the Vermero 16s and I did 15.16 with the average heart rate there of 128 and maximum of 141. Now you'd all expect the heart rate to be lower on the first one because of heart rate drift. And sure enough, when I got into the Nova Plus 2, I actually sort of felt like I went off sort of similar pace. But if you look at the first segment time here, I was actually nine seconds quicker. And I sort of then, I think that's why I said in the video why I felt like I was cruising more. So I think I sort of eased off a bit. Although in Rams Lane, I did an identical time. And in fact, identical heart rate. So, um, and then Knighton's Lane was very similar. And a bit slower up the hill, actually. I think um, the first time up the hill, I felt like I was working quite hard. I think it may have just subconsciously eased off a bit. Um, but anyway, the overall time was very similar. And in a way, you would say, well, that's perfectly understandable. At the same time, just a slightly higher heart rate because of heart rate drift, it was higher again. Now, you might say the same about the Invincible. In fact, in that one, I actually run it quick, slightly quicker than the other two. But again, heart rate has gone up by two beats. And you could argue that's all to do with heart rate drift. So I think, as I said in the video, I was really struggling to see that any of these three shoes are really better than each other on the stats. It kind of like the Invincible felt like quite hard work because just the sheer volume of the shoe, just the sheer base of it. I think once I have quite narrow feet, then I sort of find those sort of wide platform shoes quite difficult. There's a lot of surface area, especially in the UK 13, a lot of surface area hitting the ground. But interestingly, if you look at the running dynamics, my cadence there was 184 in all of the daily trainers in inverted commas. Very little difference in the vertical oscillation. You might say there's a fraction higher in the Invincible because it's the most spongy. And as a result, the ground contact time was slightly higher. But interesting, the ground time balance was pretty much identical to all of them. So, you know, you can't really read too much into that. I think one thing that was interesting, I noticed when I did the best time, which was last September, that was literally the evening of when I ran a 400 meter race in lunchtime. So I was really quite fit at the time, just before I did my calf tear. So, so a 462.59 was my uh, fastest I've run since I was sort of uh, back in my track days, but best part of 20 years ago. So, and that was quite a warm sort of late summer's day. That was sort of 18 degrees. So in a way, I think that sort of shows that as much part of the weather. I think what was also interesting that if you look at the first segment in the text tempo and extra percent, I was a lot, lot faster. Most of the difference between the tempo and extra percent and the run shield were in the first section. Now in the run shield, I, I rather sort of let myself go a bit and I ended up running. The first bit was kind of similar to the others there, 510. It's fairly similar and the heart rates. Yeah, you could say that maybe a slight drop there because the, the heart rates were going up and then it just dropped a beat there. So with heart rate drift, you expect that to go up, but then the maximum was higher. That was probably up Alford Hill, I think. Although I did hit the hill a bit higher. Daisy's just appeared. Come on, Daisy, you want to say hello? There's Daisy. Daisy interlude. Daisy comes and sits on the tea towel that I put next to me. But she'll probably start playing with things for now. So... Right, where was I? Yeah, so in the, the run shield, I sort of set off at the right sort of pace. And then I found when I came to the hill there, you see two, two or three seconds quicker up the hill, although my heart rate did get higher because I got the highest heart rate would, would have been at the top of that hill, 143. So it just sort of felt like you wanted to push on in the run shields. And then Rams Lane, I think on that part of the course, it's my most natural habitat, running in a fairly sort of flat ground, just tapping out the rhythm. So again, you can see that I run that section significantly faster than the first two. And interestingly, the Invincible was quite quick as well, but that was sort of um, slightly quicker. But yeah, I mean, the heart rate was higher, but I think that largely shows the fact that I was then tired. So um, maybe the shoe was just allow me to get a bit more out of myself. And then Knighton's Lane... Again, that sort of like that big swooping downhill. Maybe it felt like it was slightly easier to run downhill in a slightly sort of lighter shoe. And then the uphill, significantly faster up the hill. But again, I sort of paid for it in the maximum heart rate because it shot up to 147 there. And so I sort of came in with a time significantly faster than the other ones, but also with the highest heart rate. So 
I think I'd say I'd say that heart rate. If you close that out for heart rate drift, I would say that the run shield was the fastest, but maybe not significantly so. But again, it is the last one. But I think what I, the main takeaway from this, I think, is the, the three shoes that I was really testing: the the, the Vermeer 16, Nova Blast 2, and the Invincible. Well, there's a little, very little to choose between them, and I think it largely depends on what you prefer. I mean, the Vermeer 16 is the firmest. Nova Blast 2 is soft, but not quite as soft as the Invincible. They're all sort of similar weights. Quite a different experience on foot because of the plushness of, of the midsole. But yeah, at the end of the day, the cadence was exactly the same. The ground tank contact balance was the same. The ground, the VO was more or less the same. So, and the times were more or less the same. So I think it just really just shows that any of these daily trainers work and whichever one you like most, but yeah, if you want to run slightly faster, then yeah, get into a slightly faster shoe. But it's it's not this night and day difference, perhaps. If I'd have perhaps worn the next percent version one at the end there, I was expecting that to drop down by about 10 or 15 seconds for that effort. But again, it's all marginal gains. But I mean, I think as I saw in an interview that Kafuzi did with Nick Willis, why do you train all those miles to do a mile? I said, well, if I can gain one second of the opposition, it's the difference between meddling and coming ninth, maybe. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of what you put in with running, isn't it? So yeah, this is quite why you have different shoes for different things. But don't expect miracles in a shoe because any of these shoes will do okay. And as you can see, seven minute mile pace is hardly going to be uh, lightening up the world, is it? When you've got elite athletes doing well under five minutes. But at least that's sort of indication that I'm sort of there or thereabouts with sub, my sub three aims for my next marathon. Not quite sure what that's going to be because I'm having serious doubts whether going to Boston is going to be a great idea. So I think I might try and get a place in Manchester and keep it in the UK. The entries have currently closed, but um, they're apparently reopening in January. Where uh, the word is that there's a very good chance that you, those will have some places. So, yeah, I'll uh, have to look out for that. So, if you want to examine all of the uh, Strava links here, I've got them all here for you with a few more notes. And so, I hope you found this interesting. Which of these shoes do you prefer? Have you got any of them? Are you thinking of getting in any of them? Does these results surprise you? Do you agree with them? Anyway, hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe and all that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one then. Bye.